Hi, my tricks. So today we're going to look at some tricky meiosis questions from past papers. Um, meiosis is often not seen as a topic that gives us difficulty when we learn it. The problem is, is that a lot of people don't get these sections right. And I've chosen a whole bunch of tricky questions that we can go through from old papers that hopefully will make um, your life a lot easier preparing for the final exam. So let's dive into this question. It says the diagrams below represent the distribution of chromosomes pair 21, which is an important piece of information, as it appears in the gametes at the end of meiosis 2. And the final piece of information that's really important to us is that this is a human male. And this will ultimately influence some aspect of the answer. It's important that when you do meiosis questions, you determine whether or not they are speaking about meiosis in any organism or if they're speaking about a male or a female human because this can impact the answer that you give. So the first question says, explain why the gametes represented by diagrams C and D do not have any chromosomes. Now this question is for three marks. So simply saying um, that this is due to non-disjunction is not going to get you the three marks. That's going to get you the one mark. The question says explain. And whenever we use the word explain, we have to say how and why. So how does non-disjunction occur and why is it happening? So you're going to get one mark for saying non-disjunction. And the second two marks you're going to get for saying that one or both chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles. Now, it's also important to acknowledge when this particular split didn't occur. And generally, non-disjunction occurs in anaphase, in particular anaphase 1. And you need to acknowledge that to receive a mark. And then likewise, you need to either say that two chrom chromosomes move to one pole or none move to the other. I will post the memo alongside the questions once we're done in case you wanted to attempt these before we actually went through the answers. Now, question 2.1.2. It says, if gamete A was involved in fertilization, describe how this may result in Down syndrome. Keeping in mind that, remember, Down syndrome is when we have an extra chromosome. So we will have 47 chromosomes. Now, let's not forget, this is a describe question, which means that you need to go into a little bit more detail. You are not just going to say why and how, you also need to acknowledge things like when this happens and where does it happen. There's a little bit more detail in this answer. So, here we go for the answer. We will say that gamete A will have 24 chromosomes, or an extra chromosome. And if it fertilizes with a normal ovum, and we must acknowledge that it's an ovum, because remember, at the very beginning of the question, it said that this was a male um, gamete. Right at the beginning here. And that means that we have to acknowledge that this is going to fuse with a female gamete. So make sure that you keep that little piece of important information in your back pocket. The zygote that will be formed will have three chromosomes at 21, or you could say the zygote formed would have 47 chromosomes. Now this also needs to be said. If they don't ask for Down syndrome, please do not talk about Down syndrome. If the question simply asks, what would the result be? You are simply going to say there's going to be an extra chromosome, or it will, result, it will result in 2n plus 1. Please do not talk about Down syndrome unless the question asks for it, which in this case it has. Right, let's move on to question 213. Due to the process of crossing over, which is important, the chromosomes in the diagrams of A and B appear different to each other. First question, identify the phase of meiosis during which crossing over occurs, that is prophase 1. Remember, chromosomes cannot cross over in prophase 2 because they are no longer similar. Homologous pairs are similar to one another, they carry similar genes, so they can cross over. In prophase 2, they've already separated from their partner, so they cannot cross over. Right, 213B. 
Describe the events during crossing over. Yet again, remember, describe is a little bit more information. And when we do describe, we're doing more than just remember the how and the why. We're doing the where, the when. There's a little bit more involved in here. And so, when we describe crossing over, we say that adjacent chromatids of homologous chromosomes cross. You can say something like... Um, uh, homologous chromosomes touch or something like that. But then you need to say where they touch. They touch at chiasma or chiasmata. And then why do they do this? Because there's an exchange of DNA or an exchange of genetic material. Now, this last question explain the significance of crossing over in natural selection. This actually delves into a different topic. We often assume that topics are going to have a single um, point or a single context. In other words, we just think that meiosis questions are only going to be about meiosis. But examiners can take topics like meiosis and they can build it into other things we've learned. For example, natural selection and evolution. So, let's not forget when we answer some question like this, two important things. Crossing over is for what? It's for variation. Remember, we want to increase the variation because the more variation there is in a species, the more likely it will survive. This brings me to natural selection. The purpose of natural selection is to, let, to select individuals who are best suited for an environment so that they can survive. So now let's get into how we answer this. If we have to explain the significance of crossing over and natural selection, we are going to explain what um, the purpose of meiosis and crossing over is. So first Mark is going to go to mentioning that it is there to increase variation. Genetic variation produces suitable or favorable characteristics to ensure survival when the environment changes. The alternative is to answer it perhaps in the negative and to say that variation can result in unfavorable characteristics and this reduces the chance of survival. My advice, please don't answer in the negative. In other words, answer directly to the positive of the question. The question is asking the significance of crossing over and natural selection. So, speak about the positive aspects of these two things, unless, of course, the question asks negative aspects. Now, I have inserted the memo alongside this, and I really encourage all of you to um, spend time not necessarily learning memos off by heart, but you should really spend time um, looking at how memos are structured, what they are asking for, and how they want you to word things. I'm going to be doing many more of these tricky questions on different topics. Um, each video will have some kind of previous question and how best to answer them and why they've been tricky. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye!